Okay, so this video uh, you're about to see is is a video tutorial on how I got to this result. Uh, just a very basic abstract uh, architectural design. Um, you know, nothing nothing too serious. Th this video is very much intended to uh, for basic beginners, um, and I try to. Uh, instead of doing a lot of uh, video editing and just showing you all the all the good bits, I am leaving these videos a bit more uh, unrefined, uh, just so that you guys can see uh, my whole process. And so we'll start from scratch, and um, and in this lesson we'll we'll figure out how I modeled all this, and also how to sort of do some basic rendering uh, and colors so that we can we can start getting a good idea of what we want. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and um, I will be trying, I'll try to come out with more videos as, um, as when I have the time. So uh, remember to check back often in my website or in uh, my YouTube channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye. <clears throat> okay. Hello. This video is, is, is made to introduce you guys to Modo in a very basic level. It's very much an intro video to Modo. Uh, for this project, we're going to be building an app, an abstract uh, architectural building. So the first thing we'll need is a human to sort of control our scale. Uh, every time I, I, uh, I see people learn how to model in 3D, they forget to focus on what, what size they're modeling. It's very difficult to determine the size even if you see the measurements without already having something in the scene so a quick way to do that is to use Moto's presets uh, and to activate those presets all you have to do is press either F6 or you could press up here in this in this button and what I'm gonna add into my scene here there's meshes and under meshes there's basic I'm gonna add a shadow catcher and under human I'm going to add this lady. So all I do is double click it. And as you can see, it was, uh, I was already in a very small scale. So now I know what, what the size of a human is in my scene. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is uh, color her uh, a solid color. Uh, I find the texture a bit distracting. So it's better, I just need her there for proportioning. So I'm going to color her either white or black. So I click on her, um, make sure I'm in the item select mode by pressing 5, and then I click on her. And then I, to, to uh, set a material to her, I have to press the letter M. And that, that sets up my polygon set material tool. And here I'm going to name the, the new material human, and I'm going to make it black or purple, not black. And press OK. Okay, so now she's there. Um, and now, just with these two things in my scene, if I go up here to my render window, uh, another way to switch back and forth, I think, is a uh, uh, Control Space. No, uh, Alt Space. No. Uh, ah, Control Tab. There you go. So if you press Control Tab, you actually it's the same thing as clicking up here. So you could just uh, that's another quick way to sort of go from the render window to the modeling window. And then it sort of just toggles back and forth like that. Or you could select them right here. If I go into my render window uh, and I press play, uh, I can select her. And when I press A, it zooms into my whole scene. And since I have a shadow catcher, it zooms pretty far back. But if I press shift A, it gets a little closer to what I have selected. And and as you can see, it's already um, we're sort of already getting the basics of our of our scene. And the first thing I'm going to do is, since this is going to be a bit of an abstract lesson, uh, I'm going to change the color to something a little more exciting. So uh, here we have our shading uh, lister, I think. And if you go here under environments, and you open this up, and you click here, and you open that up, and here we actually have the the environment material. And right now it has this uh, grayed out four color gradient. Uh, but right for right now, I'm going to change that to two color. And then I'm going to make it a lot, a lot more abstract. 
Mm-hmm. Maybe something, hmm, something like that. Okay. So now with that, with those easy steps, I already have a, a very nice uh, uh, basic uh, scene. Uh, now, now I want to start building my actual environment. So I'm going to go back to the modeling window, uh, pressing control tab. And I'm going to move her, uh, I want to model my environment uh, in 0, 0, 0, so I'm going to move her out of the way for right now. Uh, I, when, when, I'm, uh, when I'm modeling, especially in architecture, uh, some sort of environment, I always tend to have my snap on. To turn the snap on, you either click up here, or you can press F11, and the snap, the snap menu pops up. And I'm gonna, uh, for right now, I'm gonna take out Vertex. I'm just gonna keep it on grid. Uh, I'm gonna hide my shadow catcher because right now I don't need it. So I'm gonna click on it and press this I and just to sort of hide it away. Now I'm gonna go back to my woman. And when I press W, as you can see, now it snaps to the grid. And the good thing about Moto's grid is that it is um, progressive. As in the closer I get, the smaller my snaps get, but they're still within, uh, uh, you know, but they're still in a good range as in, as in it, they won't uh, leave me any, uh, just anywhere in space. It'll be, it'll be easy for me to find that point if I keep snapping it to a grid. So I'm going to move her out of the way uh, using these arrows. To move something, you have to either press the W's, uh, you have to press the W button and then you can click on these arrows. And then that way you can you can move anything around. <clears throat> now I'm gonna I want to add a a cube to my scene. So there's a, a lot of ways to do that. Either I could add a new mesh here, and then click on a, a, a here, and then click on cube to add a add a add the shape in there. Or if I press shift, you see these these plus symbols show up. And when I press it, it adds a cube, and it also adds a one in my item list. So I'm gonna double click it and call that, call this uh, structure. Okay. So uh, as you can see, it's about the size of like a like a storage box, and um, I want to start moving it around and changing it around. So uh, the the first thing I need to do is get into get into the different uh, polygon or, or, or basically sub modes of, uh, of the item. So when I click when I click on it, uh, I could change to polygon mode by, press, by pressing three. And now I could select any polygon I want. Uh, as you can see right now, both of them get selected. And the reason why that is I, I forgot to uh, de uh, delete my, or deactivate my symmetry tool. So if I press W, see it, it happened, it does a, it starts to model things uh, symmetrical to whatever plane I decide, but that would, I don't want to do that right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that it's off, and now I can actually uh, move move my 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 faces around. I could move my my uh, vertices around the edges um, just by pre just by clicking on it, by pressing three and W to to make it move. <clears throat> and same thing with uh with the different view with the with the different items. So you know if I just want a vertex, I press one, or if I just want an edge, I press two, and then with W, I could go up or down. Uh, as you can see, how I rotated my views, you, there's a couple ways to do that. But how how I do it is I press Control and Space to activate this radial menu, and then that way I could go quickly from the different views that I want. So I'm gonna go to the front view, and and I'm gonna first uh, press one to select my vertices, and then using the middle mouse button, I'm gonna select all of them and press W, and then I'm gonna move this up to the ground floor, and then I'm gonna select the top row uh, using the same thing, the middle mouse button, and as you can see, there's like a, about a little straight line that connects. Um, Try to use that as a way to help you connect something. If I if I go this the other way around, I have to sort of 
match it and come in right but um in something big like this it's, it's easy but what if i had another another set of points here how i could do it is select and then move around and then now i have that straight line to help me select uh what points i want <coughs> and then i press w and then that that gives me i can move it as high as i want so i sort of i always like uh high roof lines let me see so i think i'll I'll keep it maybe maybe this high <coughs> then uh, I'm gonna press 1 to select select another set of vertices and I press W and we'll make it we'll make it bigger now I'm gonna go to top select it and let's move it back mm. I kind of want to keep it in a, in the in the same grid I kind of want this corner to be zero, zero, zero. I always try to organize everything as much as I can because, uh, you know, there's no, uh, the, the more organized my file is or my structure is, the more organized my end look, my, the end will look. And it really always gives you a little bit more of a professional look. <coughs> All right. So now I got a, a giant cube in space, well, in, uh, in front of her. And if we go back to our rendering and press play, Oh, uh, and remember, right now my shadow catcher is hidden, so I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it on again. And oh, whoops! See, my shadow catcher isn't big enough, so I have to select it. Uh, I'm gonna go to item mode, pressing five, and select my shadow catcher. And then with the uh, pressing the letter E, oh no, R, I could scale it. And now, now it'll it'll um, the the shadows would be in all my scene. <coughs> Uh, here, as you can see in the render window, I have a little light right here um, to move around my my uh, my my directional light. So if I select it uh, in item mode, if I select it. Uh, I could press the rotate key to base it, to rotate it around and change the angle of my sun or light source. Do something more like that. Something like that. Okay. <clears throat> so now I'm going to hide my shadow catcher again. And now that I have a general sense of the scaling of everything, I'm going to hide her too. Um, Cause right now I sort of want to do a little more freeform modeling. And there's a lot of easy ways to get some cool results already in Modo. So first I'm going to go into a polygon mode by pressing three. And I can select any polygon I want. I'm going to get this one and this one. And then over here, uh, we have a bunch of different tool sets. And right now, in basic, this is where you add geometry. There's duplicate, mesh edit. For right now, since we, cho we are in, in polygon select mode, I'm going to go to polygon. And here we have different tools that are very nice. Uh, but for right now, we'll focus on inset. So if I press inset, and, and I click on my screen and drag it, I'm adding a wall into, into or a, a little like wall thickness kind of into my, into my scene. So he, I could do it freehanded or I could also you, uh, put in the number I actually want. So here I'm gonna, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make it 200 millimeters and press apply. Oh, uh, and then uh, yeah, press space to sort of get out of so now I have these this inset and then I'm gonna delete this face and delete this face by selecting them and pressing delete now I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to select all these edges because uh, I want to make a bridge between them so I'm gonna press 2 to select the edges and then I'm gonna double click here and then I'm gonna go to the other side and I press shift and I'm gonna double click here. Now I've selected both of those, what they're called edge loops, and now I wanna bridge them, right? And I've selected an edge, so I have to go to the edge menu. And then here we have the bridge tool, and when I select it, and I click on the screen, now I have, now I have, uh, I have uh, some skin inside there. <coughs> if I turn on my uh, woman again, 
and my shadow catcher again, I would go to my render menu. Uh, now we're getting something a little more um, better looking. Okay, so let's say I want to make uh, a wall. I sort of want to make a little bit of a of a wall back here, uh, in that that just goes maybe up and then around, sort of like a like a roof or something. So <clears throat> I want to I want to add an edge right here, and with that uh, I can use the Add Loop tool. First, I'm going to select it, and then go into Edge mode go to add loop and then I'll add a loop somewhere around here as you can see here I have two distance <coughs> measurements and um, I always use these because I again I'm very I want to always keep everything uh, relative to the grid you know right if I, would, if I just leave it right there it would be at 623.412 millimeters uh, that might you know I, I really I'd rather have it at 600 millimeters you know that way everything's nice and round. <clears throat> uh, and then I think, uh, and then um, when I press the middle mouse button sort of to deactivate the tool, <clears throat> then I want to press three. And then I'm gonna uh, uh, to get the polygon. I'm gonna select this polygon, and now I want to sort of extrude it up. Um, in Modo, uh, uh, the extrusion tool is called the Shift tool. So we go here to polygon, and then we have Shift. And when I click it, see, now I'm getting a little bit, a little wall back here, right? <coughs> and here, of course, you have all the, you you have the number you, you can add in. Right now it's at, it's at three meters. I feel like I only want a third of that. So we'll keep it at one meter. <coughs> yeah, cause I, I sort of want like a floating shelf for some reason. You know, right now I'm just having fun. There's really no, there's no rules here. So then I'm gonna I'm gonna go into my right view and I wanna add a, I wanna add a, an edge right here. Now I could use the edge loop tool, but I'm gonna take this as an opportunity to show you guys the slice tool, and it's here in the mesh edit. And uh, uh, if I click on it, see if I just like it, it slices the the mesh into wherever I select it. But the good thing, well, the powerful thing about this tool is if I want to like slice it across this in a very uh, weird angle, it's it's possible. Um, I don't recommend it because now we're 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 gonna be start dealing with other issues like this triangle right here. But um, if you're just doing straight uh, cuts across, it, it could be a very quick way to to sort of get what you want quicker. So. <clears throat> I'm gonna slice it right here. No, oh, whoops. Like that. And then I'm gonna grab this and then I'm gonna extrude that out or shift that out. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna put it into a more round number. And and there and now I what I what I could do is select these vertices and I'll start moving them around. See, maybe I like different proportions. Maybe this now feels too thick to me. Oop. So I'll go. I'll make it just a little thinner. Uh, maybe square it up. Hmm, there we go. All right, so I, I don't know what I'm doing in terms of what I'm designing, but I'm just, I, right now I'm just having fun with it. Uh, I'm gonna slice it over here because I kind of want to have some sort of opening here. So I'm gonna get my slice tool, or I could, add, you know what, I'll add an edge for, for this one. So I'm gonna go to my edge tools and then uh, add loop and add a loop right there. Oh, whoops, see it didn't really. Let's go to, s uh, let's go 6.5, oh, 6.5 millimeters. There you go. 
now I have I have this little actually you know what I'm, I I want this to be closer to this edge. So what I'm gonna do is move it back. There we go. Now I want a little bit of a bevel with uh with some nice uh um because I'm gonna make a hole here. So but I want some thickness so it doesn't look like it's gonna fall. So I'm gonna go click on this thing and this thing. And I'm gonna go back to my uh, polygon tools and I'm gonna get my inset tool. And now I could sort of freehand it right now just to sort of see the thickness I want. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, and then I'll see what it is at, at 875. That's cool. Uh, but I think I'm gonna go to, hmm, I'm gonna go to 800. Okay, then I'm gonna select this again, delete it, select this, delete it, press two uh, to select, and then double click on this edge to select all of it. Uh, shift, select all of it, and then we're gonna go to my edge tool and we're gonna bridge. There we go. Now, now I, I think this is already looking pretty cool. I think this is, uh, now that I added so much weight here, it looks like this is not enough weight. Like it feels like it's gonna tip over. So I'm gonna select all of these and um, push them back. There we go, that looks cool. And let me see. You know what I'm thinking um, now that I see it with this thing, I I think I I want like a almost like a floating edge kind of thing. So let's see. I'm I'm figuring out what's the fastest way to do that. I think what I'm gonna do is delete this. Yeah, we'll delete that. And then, um, and then I'll I'll add the <coughs> I'll bridge this again to to um, close it, and I'm actually gonna then delete the the edge. So now it's clean again. Here I'm gonna do the same. The reason why this seems like my might, might seem counterintuitive, but the reason why is because I know that if I delete this edge, it'll kind of keep everything together, and all I have to do is just add that bridge there. So I'll go like that. And then the and then there. So now it's clean again. And I'm what I'm thinking right now. What would be the fastest way to add a little bit of an inset in there? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna use this face. Um, I'm gonna press Shift H to hide everything else uh, in that in that item. And then I'm gonna use inset inset again. Uh, apply. And then I'm gonna use shift. And if I, I think it was maybe one millimeter up. Let's see. Oh no, I went a little too, a little too low. But luckily, since I since I'm snapping everything together, it's fairly easy for me to come back and align it. So now we have this cool. Uh, Cool, like almost floating, fo floating uh, roof. And I think I'm gonna, I wanna make it less uh, obvious. So I could do that either by make. I'll probably make this higher, just because I'm, I'm a fan of high roofs. Now I want to add a bevel or a rounded bevel on the edges of uh, of my of my house. I also want to give it some angles. Uh, so I'm gonna first first I want to give it the, the the angles I want. So I'm gonna go to the front view and then I'm select these things. I'm gonna I'm gonna take them out 
And you see how it's sort of twisting my it's sort of twisting my 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 vertexes because this thing isn't lined up. Uh, you have to take that into consideration when you're moving polygons around. So when I I think I will leave it here and here inside I gotta move it out more to sort of clean everything up. And here you can also play with thickness too. But I'm gonna try to keep everything as, as symmetrical as possible. Mm, I think that's a little too far out. So let's move it a little more in. Something like that. And then we'll move this back out. There you go. Since we're keeping it very abstract, I'm gonna actually just keep one wall like that. <clears throat> so now I actually, I wanna add a rounded bevel here. And uh, the way to do that is um, is quite easy. First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my polygon select tool and I'm gonna double click on on this, this, this polygon set. And I'm gonna press shift H to isolate it. And I wanna add a bevel right here there's a couple of things that, that you should know when you're adding a bevel. So uh, here in the edge tool, there's the bevel. And if I press it right now, just like that, it adds a, it's just adding a, what's called a sharp, uh, a squared bevel to it. Um, that's, not, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the bevel tool. And here, you know, you can see what you want. I'm gonna go round. And in the round level, I'm gonna put maybe, I'm gonna put 10 and now see I'm actually adding a nice a nice rounded corner the 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 only problem with this right now if I wanted this sharp edge here th that would be the, the uh, correct way to sort of build this but I I want a round corner here too and I could already see this is gonna cause me some problems um, having this sharp corner here and then trying to add a bevel. So um, just so to, just to see what happens, let's see what happens when I select both of these. And then I use the same, the same tool. You see how it's doing this weird uh, crisscross thing? It's, uh, this is just the, the, algor the, the bevel algorithm. Uh, basically, it's a, it's a little confused and it's causing us a lot more problems than solutions. So we're gonna take that out, and and how I how I sort of go around that is by first deleting these faces here and here, and then I add my bevels. So I'm gonna go here, and then then I'm gonna add my bevels here, right? Something. Let's see, where should we? We'll keep it at 600. And I sort of just click there at 600, so now we're good. Okay, but I actually do want my walls there. So what I'm gonna do is uh, use my bridge tool to to select these walls. And if I um, if I press on, the, on the, this edge and then the next edge, if I press up, Modo will just sort of guess what which is the next one I want, and uh, most of the time, and it's correct if it's in the right direction. So I'm gonna do that again, and and now I'm selecting all those. There. Now I have all these selected. I'm gonna use that bridge tool that we used earlier today. So there. See now we have a nice clean edge. Now let's do it on the same side. Another way to do that is if I press two, and if I double click, it finds all of them. But I'm using the I know I'm going to use a bridge tool, so I could press Control to deselect these this one and this one, and basically now I I, I mean, that's another way to come up with the same selection. And let me bridge them. So there, now we have a nice little rounded edge. <coughs> Now let's un and to unhide everything that that you've um, that you hid, 
remember to be in the same mode as in don't be in item mode uh, be in polygon edge or whatever whatever mode you are in uh, when you hit it to unhide it so now okay now we're, now we're getting somewhere now that um now that I've been looking at this for a while there's a couple of things that I want to change on it uh, one is I want to add a little bit of space here I want to um, sort of um, have this be a separate entity so I have to actually separate this and the way to do that is I'm gonna press 2 and I'm gonna select both of them and obviously I'm selecting the edge so in the edge tools there is the split command and then um, and then you split it so now if I if I select um, and a quick way to select all, like for example, all of this is to press L because uh, once you select two of them, because what it's looking for is the 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 what's the next corresponding polygon. So then it, it selects all of them. Then shift H to only have these, and then um, and then I'm gonna move it. I'm gonna move it back. So. And actually, I'm, I'm gonna want this to be down here. So I'm gonna first. I'm gonna grab this point and lower it. And move it a little bit back. And then I'm gonna. I kind of want basically the same angle from here to here. Even though it's for right now, it doesn't have to be perfect. What I could do is actually get it closer to help me. And then, and then just sort of guesstimate in there. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna use two to select this edge and double click it, and then that gives me all of it. So, then now that I have the exact edge or a close approximation, I'm gonna go back. Uh, maybe a little more. Let's see. I don't know why. I just think uh, it might make it look interesting. So then I'm gonna use the bridge tool. Oh, whoops! Uh, and then just select this edge and this edge, and bridge it. And right there. So now I have this cool gap. Uh, I'm gonna, for some reason, I feel like maybe I should put her in there. I don't know why. Just to make sure her head's not gonna bump. Oh, my bump. And there you go. And then we'll make her like like if she isn't running into the wall. And then I want to add some uh, windows here and here. So um, first, and also I'm gonna add a shelf here. But so first, I gotta add some spacing to cut the windows from. So I'm gonna add a loop, right? Oh well, first I have to select this thing uh, as an item, and then go into edge mode, and then add loop. And here. 600 millimeters feels good to me and then on this side the same thing oh and to repeat the command you just did you could press control R oh whoops it, ha it has to be it's still it's it isn't exactly um, the most stable tool but let me see there you go when you uh, uh, control R is to is to uh, reselect the last tool you did uh, but sometimes if you if you press select a certain you know select polygon or something like that it'll sort of um forget but now that i'm here on this edge i'm gonna go back here and put 600 millimeter oh, 600 millimeters right there too and there so all right now i want i'm actually going to use my slice tool because uh, if I wanted to add a straight window right here and with my loop tool, if I click if I click here, you see how on the edge on the edge it sort of goes up so it's not straight across. This is one of those uh, instances where the mesh slice tool would be a lot more convenient. So I'm gonna use that tool. So mesh edit slice and then let me see. Because I'm gonna want to slice it here too. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna slice through all of it like that, and then I'm 
I'm thinking is how big these windows right now for oh, whoops for right now I'm gonna do it this big but we'll see once we see it in perspective they might look too big hmm I'm going to move them um, uh, up a little bit. I think this one's fine. I'll move this one up. I feel like this one should go up. <clears throat> yeah, something like that. OK, so I'm going to use the same technique I've, I've been using, where I select these uh, outer polygons, and then I just bridge the inside part. Edge bridge, there you go. Edge um, bridge, there you go. Okay. Now I want to add a, I want to add a window in here, and there's a lot of in here too. I'm also gonna make sure to close it. Uh, that's fine. <coughs> Let me. Oh, and then the other thing I wanted to do is from the front, I wanted to have this angle match up a little more with that angle. Just visually. Try to catch the, the same slope. Yeah, I think that's good. And also actually make it more functional in terms of shade and give it just more space here. See, nice. And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna move this one out just because I can. <coughs> there we go. Okay, so now I am going to, I'm just gonna quickly add um, some more components, as in uh, just to fill up these areas here and here. Oh, and uh, I wanted to add a shelf here. So how, how I'm gonna add the shelf there is first I'm gonna cut it. Yeah, first I'm gonna slice it from here. Slice it again here, and actually, I'm gonna choose this one and and actually add a shelf there. And the way I'm gonna do that is I am gonna extrude it first. We'll shift it, go out like that. We'll go 1.5 millimeters and then I'm actually gonna make these smaller or from the let me I'll, I'll do one at a time actually And I could make them equal, but eh, I don't feel like it. Another thing um, I usually do is I'll move her closer just to sort of see. See, now that I have her really close, that's a ridiculous shelf. So that's a uh, good thing we did that. So let's select this. We'll go to select all of these and we'll move more to a shelf height. And then also that this looks really thick for a shelf. I feel like that's still high. There you go, that makes more sense. And then this thing, um, oh, whoops.
There we go. Okay. Now I think, let me see. Um, now the only thing I really want to do is add, add some, uh, some light elements in here. And how I'm going to do that is first I'm going to add a loop in the middle here and see how it goes around everything. And um, this one, I'll just keep it at 50% just because I already kind of moved everything around a lot. And then I'm going to select all that and I'm going to use my, my inset tool or my bevel tool. Um, but with just one, with no round level. And then I'm gonna add this little little strip like that. And then I'm gonna select all that, right? If I press L, it gives me all the loop. And then I'm gonna shift that up. And this should be a fairly small shift, so let's see. Oh, I didn't like that it has that. So what I actually, what I'm gonna do is use my bevel tool. And the bevel tool, um, it's a bit, it's a bit like a combination of both. Um, it shifts and insets something out. So there. And I think for right now, I'll, I'll add, I'll add some some lights here. And using almost the same technique, uh, I will add some windows here. So first, I'm gonna. First, I gotta go to edge mode, and I'm gonna add a loop in the middle, right? Fifty percent. Then I'm gonna select. Oh, whoops! I forgot to press enter. Fifty percent. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Select that loop. Bevel it. And let's bevel it 40 millimeters. Apply. Oh, whoops. Ah. So now I have I have these uh, uh, four points. Uh, <clears throat> now this will be uh, since I just want to add uh, basically two volumes right here. The easiest way would be to basically delete this edge delete this edge and then use my um, my bridge actually you know mm, no actually I want those edges there so what I'm gonna do is actually control copy them paste them and then I'm gonna hide everything else away and then I'll press F to flip them and then I'm gonna press 2 to select to select their edges and then I'm gonna bridge them so now I have this uh, window I know that seemed like a, um, a lot of steps uh, but uh, in in 3d modeling you know there's a lot of different ways to approach anything and so you really um, it, to me it's very organic you know I just sort of think of the solution and and sort of go with it um, there's millions of ways to approach this. Uh, this to me, the reason why is I wanted its own, like basically cube in there that I could, that I could uh, shade, and then I wanted a wall in the background since it's gonna be glass. So I'll do that one more time here. Uh, so uh, let's see, we go into edge mode, right? We add a loop in the middle of it. So here, we go fifty percent. Then we select all the loop using the edge tool and then we bevel it 40 millimeters apply okay now this is the part that that maybe last time was a bit more difficult so I select all of these I press shift H to hide every no I control copy then I paste them now I have two sets of polygons I hide everything else and then I press F to flip the faces. See, now they're on this side. See? And then I, I choose these two edges and, and this edge, 
so these four and I bridge them and there there so <clears throat> now let's let's um let's start coloring this thing um first we'll we'll color the the things we just made these things you just double click double click M we'll call this glass and for right now we'll just do a quick light blue okay uh, then I think this is its own thing mm -hmm. um, this I I'm trying uh, this I'll add I'll make it a little bit gray uh, I'll make it like a semi dark gray Sorry. <clears throat> Something like that. Okay. And this thing, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna color. I'm gonna color this thing gray too, just to sort of as a starting base. And then what I'm gonna do is actually add some accent colors. So if I think if I, I want, I'm gonna press these two and when I press L, it sort of catches all the edges, right? And then I'm gonna press M, we're gonna call this accent color. And this color will make it maybe, uh, mm, I'm thinking for right now, let's see, right now we'll make it on uh, like a teal. Let's go teal. There we go. And I'm going to add that same accent color right here. So I select them. I press L to get that loop and M and then I have it selected okay now I also want to add some lights to the scene which uh, the only ones I think I'll use for right now is this one so this here L and then M for light <coughs> So once we go back to the render tool, we'll press play. See, we're getting something a little cooler now. Now, but but I want I want to change things up. So what I'm gonna do is um, actually use the presets to sort of get me going. Uh, so I'm gonna go F6, and here on the presets we have uh, a lot of really nice uh, materials already made by uh, by Modo included in Modo 10 so let me oh uh, let's go under glass here um, and then we'll add let's add this reflective We'll add this reflective, and I will add this clear glass. So see, I just uh, drag and drop it into here, and and then also in my lights, I'm gonna go material. Oh, whoops, cancel. I'm gonna go presets again, and then here we have the lights, the LEDs, and we're gonna drag and drop them in there. So now that we have this going. We're going to go into the render and press play. And then there. We have a pretty, uh, a pretty quick um, concept of uh, maybe like a walking space or a, uh, maybe like a pop-up mall or something. But we just use very basic um, modeling tools to to get to this point and now to render it out I'll uh, 
I'll do some more changes. I'll probably make the, the inside should probably be white, I think. Let's go back to modeling. And then we're gonna select, let's see. Hmm. I guess the fastest way would be to shift select them like that. this inside color and we'll make it white or maybe like a very warm something like, uh, like, uh, like a warm gray all right so let's go back to rendering And with uh, with these types of, uh, with architecture drawings or renderings, I tend to always uh, change my camera into something that has a little more of a, of, um, or less, like what is it, um, let me see, uh, more fisheye, so I guess, what is the, the um, focal length, I think? No, the angle of view. Right now it's at 40, I think if we go to like 25, it'll be a lot more, a lot more distorted or is it is it am I going the right way let's see if I go five should be like super distorted no I went the wrong way uh, let's go 80 there you go <coughs> or maybe 60 Even though this is very, um, uh, to me, very basic and sort of the starting point of uh, of an environment design, uh, it, this video is is made to showcase how easy it is to sort of get things going inside of inside of Modo. So uh, the last thing I'll show you for for this video is uh, rendering out um, uh, to a, to a higher quality. Um, still fairly basic, but um, at least at least um, a little better than the standalone. So here you here in, uh, in render, we click on it, uh, you get the frame settings. In the frame, I'm gonna go 3600 by 1600. And then, and I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna actually paint her white too. Or actually, I'm going to go here, human, material, and I'm actually going to paint her white. And then, uh, going back to the render settings, in settings, we're going to go anti-aliasing, we're going to go up to 64. Um, Light samples, we're going to go to 256. Um, another one to me in global illumination, uh, I try to get this up a lot, but uh, I actually use GPU rendering. And for here, I'm just showing you guys the Moto renderer. So it actually takes quite a while unless you have a render farm or something. But I'll go to 256. And, um, and yeah, so let's hit the render button. Okay, now that that's done, um, here if you go to zoom, you can actually see the size of uh, of your rendering. And um, to me, the the reflections and the samples to me are they're still very low. But since we're just doing right now, basically um, uh, a quick design modeling, uh, we don't need to sort of waste all our time trying to get photo real renderings. Right now, the whole point of this was to kind of get a basic understanding of some of the tools in Modo with the materials and the rendering. And um, and even with some basic stuff, you could already use it uh, for a lot of things in your design workflow. 
uh, one of the best things uh, for me in Modo is I always do my environments like that. Um, here you can see uh, another one I did last week. You know, just a quick sort of uh, example, and all the base the same tools. Uh, so so yeah, thank you for watching the video, and I uh, hope you guys uh, learned. Please remember to comment um, if you have any questions. I try to answer all of them and um, or suggestions or um, tell me I suck at this, whatever, uh, anything to help. All right, bye-bye.